everyone, welcome to the next episode of Stay at Home Safaris. Um, myself and Neil heading out this morning to see what's going to come off today. Um, beautiful weather this morning, we've had a very overcast, uh, kind of miserable last few days. Um, bush has been pretty quiet as well, so change in weather, change in luck. Hopefully uh, today will bring some good things. We've just come across this little flock of guinea fowl. Um, guinea fowl will typically drink twice a day, uh, in the morning and in the evening, just before they go and roost. Uh, you can see them now this morning just enjoying the first bit of sunlight they've had in the last few days. Um, a lot of adults there and quite a few juveniles as well. They've just come out of their, their breeding season, their nesting season. Uh, so with the zebra, the uh, little breeding groups are run by a dominant stallion. Um, young males, when they reach a certain age, and uh, they start coming into uh, their sexual maturity, the dominant stallion will kick them out. You can see in this little, in this little breeding group, there's a couple of very pregnant females, uh, also one or two youngsters as well. Much like the buffalo, um, the zebras don't have a specific breeding season, um, but you will find at this time of year, with the abundance of food, there will generally be a lot more youngsters being born uh, around about this time of year. If you have a look in between the front legs of a zebra, uh, you'll see a little black or dark grey spot. Uh, that is what's known as the chestnut, um, and it's just a hard calloused piece of skin there um, so when the zebra is laying down the sharp hooves don't dig into the zebra's leg Well, a spot of luck just hit us this morning. Um, the wild dogs are back on our side. Uh, unfortunately, we've missed the, the most active part of their, their morning. Um, they're settling down now. Uh, but we'll sit around with them uh, for a bit, uh, see if they do get maybe a little bit more active, maybe go and try and find some water. Um, and then this afternoon, we will certainly uh, come and spend a lot of time with them and hopefully get them on the run this afternoon. Seems like that female's obviously still in heat, still in estrus. During this period, while the female's in estrus, um, that male is going to stick to her like glue. Going to try and mate as frequently as he can. Um, but you'll see, even when she wants to just get up and go and find another little patch of shade, he's stuck on her. Um, he's going to take most of, most of the opportunity now uh, to try and impregnate her. Uh, so for those of you who may know 
the dogs in this area. This is uh, the Investec pack. Um, there should be 18 animals in this pack. Uh, we haven't seen the uh, what they call the Sand River pack for a while now. Um, but these guys have moved in and they're becoming uh, a prominent sighting on the reserve. All right, folks, so it's starting to warm up now. They're settling down uh, for the rest of the day. We are going to carry on um, and we will most certainly catch up with them this afternoon. So we just spotted a whole whack of vultures heading down uh, to the west uh, of us. We're going to head, not entirely sure what's going to, what we're going to find on the other side. Uh, but let's go and see. Like the vultures have all come down on a on a female kudu here. Usually something um, something as big as this. If there was a leopard that had maybe taken it down, or a lion, uh, that would be s still hanging around uh, on the edges somewhere. And the vultures typically wouldn't come down unless uh, the lion or the leopard or whatever it was uh, maybe abandoned the kill, or maybe just went off to go and drink some water. And the vultures are taking that opportunity to come down. Um, usually, um, usually that's the case. But maybe this, maybe this kudu actually just died of natural causes, and the the vultures managed to find it before any of the other uh, scavengers or, or lions. Or uh, so for all the all the big birding fans or bird nerds. Uh, Cape Vulture has actually just landed in here and that's a really, really special sighting for us. Um, certainly not, they don't have the same numbers as the white-backed, uh, certainly in this area anyways. So for a Cape Vulture to suddenly arrive, that is absolutely fantastic for us. Uh, so one of the cool things um, as well when all these vultures get together um, and we won't be able to capture it on camera but there's a whole whack of uh, palm swifts in that flying around at the moment and usually when the vultures come together like this uh, with all the fighting and bickering going on there uh, a lot of the down feathers get released um, and they just kind of flap around in the grass on the outside so the swifts coming in uh, certainly will grab those um, those little down feathers uh, and take it back for nesting material um, which just goes to show again uh, nothing goes to wait uh, to waste out here in the bush which is uh, pretty cool all right folks I hope you enjoyed uh, the morning there we are heading back to the lodge after a fantastic morning. Um, I can't believe uh, our luck there with the vultures at the end. That's absolutely made my day. Um, we'll see you this afternoon.